Within the Walking With series, Walking With Beast sticks out as the best one for me. Regardless of accuracy, I think it utilizes its storytelling the best. They are theoretically dealing with the most complex set of animals, so makes sense so. So I figure I ranked the episodes and such, as well as talk about what I like it so. Number 6, Whale Killers. Bro, the Basilosaurus destroys, like, a whole pot of whales. What, I did say I'd be ranking more emotionally. I get nature's not pretty and such, but even judging this through the framework, this is a documentary team that's not meant to intervene. You'd think, why'd they go through with this? Outside of this one instant, um, the episode's mostly fine. It's an interesting bit of tension for the swimming mammal thing to try out moving the Basilosaurus. At first, shame for Basso, but after knowing what she does, more power to the elephant thing. The bits with Andrew Sarkis are pretty interesting, just a very neat looking creature, even if not totally up to date. The bit with the rhino things is pretty neat, and the detail of carrying over young is carried over to primeval, so that's cool. So overall, while least favorite of the episodes, not really anything bad, nothing like Little Das's hunt for Dinosaur Planet. Next up, New Dawn. I don't like Duncan on a lot of her earlier episodes. If anything, I'd say exploring some of the earlier life could be pretty interesting. Issue here is a matter of focus. Stronger episodes in this series have an easy focus animal, here not so much. I mean, it is basically a delectic Tibian, but there isn't exactly much stakes with this guy. We don't even know much other than she's the mother of a brood. They keep emphasizing she's someone who's within peril, but it's never ever quite experienced. There's literally three times where they seemingly imply it's in threat, but not someone else entirely. No joke. First with the Ambulocetus attack, seems it's them, but no, it's a primitive horse. Then with the ants where, seems it's them, but no, it's the baby bird. Then with the Fuchsia's gas, where it seems like they'll be in the way, but oh no, they just so happen to not be in the way. It seems like a real punchline to end to say, oh by the way, these guys don't make it. Quite like Ambu. Also, I'm not usually to harp on accuracy, but it was a little weird for them to act like they were alive during the time of the dinosaurs. No, not really. This whole opening bit's a little odd. Acting like all these guys would have made it. Those badger things they sure as heck would not make it. And what are the great squirrels doing? Honestly, the guy's a little more memorable for appearing in that Jimmy Neutron episode. Other aspects of the episode. Well, the bugs thing was pretty terrifying. Kind of seemed like reversal from the usual case in walking with with big somber giant dying. Whereas here, it's like, nah, it's the youngling. Though Ambi does die eventually. Compared to Electic Tibian, it feels like there's more tension with Ambulocetus. In the sense, we actually see it try to get the food. And you know, it's cool seeing the proto-whale. Regardless of what Basasaur involves too. Also, primitive horses are pretty neat. Anyway, next. Mammoth's Journey. Much like New Dawn, it doesn't really have much focus. Here might be slightly more justifiable since it focuses on a whole mammoth herd. Like, sure, baby is highlighted. Might see another form with more mammoth focus, especially with how awesome elephants are. But I get them kind of meeting in general. This is probably the most well known paleo mammal time period, being the Ice Age, so it's fairly neat to see. I'll see some humans, funny seeing them both Homo sapien and Homo neanderthal adapt during this time. Kind of a good reminder of how close we are with this guy. Now, Sabretooth. We're getting to episodes that have more focused protagonists again, or at least ones that aren't mass killers. Sabretooth tigers have always been sort of a prehistoric animal that has been really hard to wrap my brain around accounting just how impractical their saber teeth often seem to be. Like it, what's our focus animal? Someone named Hoftooth? Yeah, those sabers did you well. They do an interesting job setting up for conflict. Like we don't get to see a lot of Hoftooth's pride before getting kicked out. But we see how it was done so with two sets of brothers. Something that does happen in nature, but is very rare. It gives a sense that they are both like basically cheaters going against the laws of nature. Against this guy who's weathered it all. And then it's a matter of him biding his time, trying to make do of it all. While the siblings eventually lose their reign of power till it's just one. We learned of a lot of harsh truths in nature. Like the fact that the new rulers decimate the offspring of the previous. Part of the reason I couldn't get into Lion King when I was younger. Also, this set has some really unique animals, you know, the giant sloths, the macrocania. Overall, solid venture. Now, the top two are really neck to neck, but eventually with some hard choices. So, number two, Land of Giants. I really like this one. Really dig this whole set of creatures, with the hyenodonts and telodonts and almighty angel kafirs. I guess they're not the largest mammal that we know of now, but hey, they sort of give an interesting vibe. Very rhino-like with giraffe stature. 
give some dinosaur flashbacks, but these guys are smarter than a typical surpod. This episode is a coming of age story, starting from newly born to at least semi mature without its parents. I like a lot of the nuances focusing with growing up with this guy. How he hides from predators, dealing with a drought. I like the whole bit with finding water, and I'm thinking, okay, are they just gonna be lucky enough for it to suddenly rain, or they randomly find a pool? But what happens is they find another seasoned adult who helps them to water. Little extra details like that make the whole experience feel richer. There's some nitpicky things, it's probably not the most accurate out of them. Animals, a bit shrink rat. The use of scaling seems a bit off, like saying the hyenodonts are the size of rhinos when they don't feel that much. There's just one bit where they say tables are turned, and suddenly it's an Ateldont being chased by hyenodon. Then boom, a slow-mo shot. I mean, that one was just a little funny. But anyway, regardless of issues, still a fairly strong episode with an enjoyable arc. Also, really quick shout out to Forgotten Bloodlines, being a future project to deal with a lot of the similar animals. Looks interesting. Anyway, finally we have Mexican. Before there was blue the Velociraptor, there was blue Thaws to Stropithecus. And I like this blue more. I like the whole presentation of the social structure and how Blue has survived. You can see the little guy gradually bond and get more integrated into the group. This is also the episode where I start incorporating more modern animals, like for once one that's less than 10 million years ago. Overall, visiting early humans is fairly fascinating, and it's nice seeing them rise up and adapt. Anyway, that's my ranking for the Walking Beast episode. Curious with how y'alls would be like. Which time period seems most interesting to you?